Hi and welcome back to the channel. If you've not joined me before, my name is Mark and this is the Restoration Shack where I customise and build low rider bicycles, also work on my own cars. Um, I've got an old Beetle uh, Mercedes that I've done some work on and a couple of uh, Volkswagen vans that I've been converted into uh, camper vans. There's videos, I'll put a link up there, down there for, for the, the other videos. Welcome to look at it. So today, it's been a while and apologies for that with various things. It's been a while since my last video, but today I've sort of started looking in the workshop trying to get this sorted out. And there's one bike which I don't think many of you will have seen before, but it's something I built as a bit of a promo bike uh, for a music video and also um, stuff when I went to uh, festivals and shows just to kind of show my work and show what can be done. And then people have sort of asked for bikes uh, off the back of that. What I have found out is though over the winter, which we've got here in the UK at the minute, we're getting some pretty severe uh, frosts and cold temperatures. And then today's quite mild, it's 10 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, so what's happening is everything's sort of got this kind of moisture on it. And this bike has got a lot of it because it's been stood for probably 12 months, not being used. So um, what I'll do is I'll throw it on the stand and you can have a look. In fact, what I will do is, uh, before I put it on the stand, I'll kind of give you a bit of a walk around. Um, so apologies, there's, there's stuff everywhere. We've got um, some uh, insulation fleece for one of the vans that I've got to do. This tub, I'm going to be putting all the parts in. We've got all sorts of garbage everywhere. That's uh, it's a bit of a state. But onto this. So if you've seen my channel before, I do uh, eight ball low rider bikes. This one is a little bit above and beyond the others. Um, basically what I did is I built one that's got every conceivable twist option excuse the uh, the pedals basically I've tied them up there so I could uh, make more space but it's got something called a uh, which we'll get into a continental kit which is like the spare wheel um, it's got this, the twist sissy bars uh, muffling exhausts down here uh, the knockoff spinners on the thing uh, on the on the wheel axles uh, and literally every single thing I could find that was twist um, I've put on so it's not looking great at the minute as I say it's been sat for probably 12 months doing nothing uh, not even being ridden so what I'm going to do this is going to be kind of a a look at the, the bike while I strip it because I've got to clean it but also an instructional video so you kind of know what tools you need uh, to strip one down I kind of go through the parts and name the parts as, as I'd know them um, and then sort of explain what some of the trick parts are as you say people may not even know about this it's been called the content kit or the spare wheel um, and just kind of go through and give you a bit of a heads up um, answer a few questions that I've been asked over the years while I've been doing these so right we'll get this on the stand if, if it'll fit it is quite heavy so I'll try and get it up on there and uh, see how we get on so it's finally up on there um, so part of the reason without going into too much thing part of the reason there's not been a video for a while is I was involved in a bit of a, a car accident in April and it's damaged my shoulder so this was quite a even now it's what eight months later it is still quite a stretch trying to lift this up but that side we're, we're there so as i said because of the temperature changes um this over and over we get a cold spell then it warms up everything is kind of it's dripping wet um, and if i leave that on there what it'll do is i'll end up rusting um because of the thing so and it's kind of dust, so you've got dust and then water and everything, it's just, it's just filled with this. So I'm going to basically go through, there's no real specialist tools that you need to strip one of these bikes down. If I remember rightly, you need a, a Phillips screwdriver, like a crosshead screwdriver, an 8mm, a 10mm, a 13mm, a 14mm, a 15 and a 17mm spanner. So if you have a, a spanner set, then you, you, you're good to go on this bike, you, you can basically strip everything down. Um, the only sort of time you need anything a little bit special is if you're going to start stripping the axle down but you can do that usually with a just an adjustable spanner um, just one of those I think uh, American you might is that a crescent wrench I'm not sure but anyway like we, an adjustable spanner so you can get onto there and then a, a flat bladed screwdriver is usually handy as well so what I'll do is I'll go through a few bits first before we start stripping down and just sort of identify what's on here um, what I'll do is I'll grab my tub because we're going to have the plan is to take the parts off just kind of give them a bit of a wipe with a rag just to dry the water off this rag 
dried it off, um, put them in the box, and then what I'm going to do is then go through and clean the parts, and then we'll do a reassembly. So I'll probably do it in two stages. We'll do a strip down, which you've seen me do bikes before, stripping down and rebuilding in other projects. But this time I'm going to spend a little bit more time going through uh, the different items. If you then want to customise your bike, as I say, this is called twist, but if a lot of the standards are just standard chrome frames, if you then want to customise it, you then know what you're asking for or kind of know what you're looking for. Because I've had a number of people asking for the thing that I call the Continental Kit, saying, have you got the spare wheel hanger? It's ideal. But also stuff with the mufflers and the, I call them spinners or the knockoff uh, hubcaps. Um, but we've also got other items on there like the steering wheel and stuff like that. So this one has a, um, a cover set, which this one is a burgundy, like a deep red burgundy cover set. Um, that's one for the steering wheel. In fact, that's damp as well. You have one that goes on the spare wheel, which I need to just remove the, because uh, I've got a spinner on there as well. Hopefully that'll come off without falling on the floor. So we've got one of those spinners. Now these are also uh, marked inside. Usually they have a little um, sticker on. Let's see if I can show you that. See if you can see it inside there. You have this marking uh, which denotes the thread and then if it's left or right hand and the front wheels and the back wheels are different. Um, so the back wheel ones, let's see if you can get one on there. I think it's got it on. So that's a 24T 3.8 and that's the left uh, and this one's a 26T so I think the front one's a 26, the back's a 24 and then I've just had a spare which I put on the, um, the spare wheel just to kind of um, just kind of finish it off and it kind of represents, it's a little bit like the old Lincolns in the USA that the, had the kind of content kit on the back. So this just has a 15mm uh, axle bolt on it and then that lifts off and basically I think I'm going to upset the yeah, I'm going to upset the weight of this so I'll have to probably strip a little bit off the front first so I don't end up tipping the whole bike over. Might be a bit too late, let's have a look. Right, we can work with that I think. No, let me just bring you back in a minute when I've just reset this. I think what I'm going to have to do, as I say, the, the more stuff that is on this, the, the heavier this becomes. This is a, a really heavy bike compared to a standard. So what I'm going to probably do is strip a couple of parts off just to try and level it back up. Because no matter what I do, it's actually putting that much force on the clamp. It's actually moving the clamp. So I think what we'll do is we'll get the um, ape hangers off. That will kind of maybe level it back up. So one tool I did miss is you do need an Allen key. Now if you have one of these sort of universal bike tools, uh, they're on there, and I think it is, it's six mil. Let's try that. Yep, so six mil um, Allen key. And that should allow you to lift the handlebars out, and it's probably gonna tip backwards because of the weight. So on this one, you have your stem, which is on this again twist stem, the ape hanger handlebars, um, you've got a two-tone bell or ding-dong bell, um, cyclops light, and this has got the, the light hanger, and then you have uh, rear, like wing mirrors or rear view mirrors, again these are twist, and on this one as well, I don't know if you can see the handlebar grips, but these are actually uh, twist handlebar grips as well. So basically you think your 6mm key that you did the uh, the nut there for the stem also allows you to no, it's actually small let's see what it is shows how long it is since I actually stripped one of these bikes down let's see what that is. So that one is a 5mm so you need 6 and 5mm but some of these, let me just get this off and I'll show you easy. Because there's two different types of stem. You've got the one like this, which has got the two bolts on it, which is a little easier. And then you have one which has a 13 mil, it's, it's solid all the way around, and it has one 
bolt going through there with a 13 mil nut on it. So I'll just take this apart and I'll bring you back. So I've separated the eight hangers, handlebars from the stem and the steering wheel. And then basically you have like a, a cam on the bottom of that which then as you tighten that up it splays it out and that's what locks it in place in the uh, head tube. So basically I undo that, I can then take the steering wheel off and you get these in many different uh, designs. don't think I've got one of the others but this is another one which is like a chain link. Um, there's, there's, there's probably about 20 or 30 different designs of steering wheels. This one obviously I've got a double twist just to match the bike. But um, again, this has kind of got, should be chrome, it's got dirt and uh, solid in there, so that'll need a clean. And then, as I say, you've got this little cam on the bottom there. Put that back together, hopefully. So as I was saying, you have some which, if you can see that from there, but you have, this one's got the two bolts on the front, um, but you have some which are solid all the way around, and then they have a gap at the bottom, and you have one bolt going through, and the back of it, you have a 13 mil uh, nut at the back there. But as I say, this one's slightly different. Now do be careful with your handlebars as well. These are twist bars, but you have to be careful with this uh, measurement because I think there's two different types of uh, thickness on this. And I've had them before where the um, the bars don't fit the stem, they just slop around even though put tighten on. So you end up having to shim this out just to pack it. But just be aware that when you're buying this, this has a, a like a, a radius on there uh, or diameter, what it, you know, the, the thickness of that, and you have to match it to the stem. And then, as I say, we've got the twist grips. And they kind of lock on. Um, you have the mirrors, and they are usually, I think they are 10 mil. And these are all, I don't know if there's a variance, but these are all sort of UK uh, measurements, because I know you have the, the UK inch, and a American is different, but this, I'm basing this on a UK size. So basically you can loosen the, the nut off on either side and then they just slide off. Again, you've got probably 20, 30 different types of mirrors. You have ones that have uh, reflectors on and there can be two, you know, two reflectors, different colours. I think there's red, blue, green, yellow, white. Um, I've just gone for the plain ones. And these one actually are quite rare. Don't know if this is going to work because of the mirror. But these have in the mirror they have low rider stamped into the mirror, uh, which I've never seen before. Just loosen that off. And that should just slide off. relatively clean actually but we'll put it all in and then you have as I say the bars which you've seen many different styles the uh, ordinary ones are just plain chrome um, but you also get different heights some that have an angle on them but I try and keep with the standard uh, height and frame because then when you bend them forward you get a decent stance So we might be okay now to get this wheel off so I can show you this in a little bit more detail. Not bad, yeah. So as I said, you have the steering wheel cover which you saw, um, and then this, you have the continental wheel or spare wheel cover, and these also match the seat. This is a five button uh, seat, and I'll explain what the five buttons are. Um, again, so this one is a 16 inch wheel, and this is low rider wheel. The, the standards are 20s, but the, the the ones on the Continental kits are always 16. There's a lot out there and it's very difficult to find the 16 inch uh, stamped tyre. Uh, so these are kind of like rocking horse uh, stuff to try to find. Hen's teeth, we'll do it if we can't swear. Um, but yeah, 
So getting hold of one of those, they can be probably more than the Continental kit itself, just trying to find the wheel. This one's not bad, it's got a bit of dirt in there, so I'm gonna probably just get some wire wool and I'll wire wool that and then bleach the tire again to get it back to white. So again, I think this is the six mil Allen key. Not, not, on standard bikes, you won't have half this stuff. You won't have the mufflers, you won't have the antenna, um, continental kit, etc., etc. But as I say, I'm trying to just build, show you a build with, with everything on. Now, this is a twist antenna uh, with what's called bird cage. So if you have that on anything, you get seat posts. Um, I think you can also get the continental kits, uh, handlebars with this uh, in it, which is like I say, this is called bird cage. This uh, sort of design in the middle there. Now, the more um, stuff that's on there as well, the harder it is to actually get it all to line up, especially if you've got mufflers, because it all kicks out. So I've ended up having to put a slightly larger um, or longer axle bolt on this back wheel so I can get everything in. Because not only have I got a sissy bar, which you'd have as standard, uh, the fender brackets are actually thicker because the twist ones are actually a thicker metal than the standard uh, ones uh, and then you have the continental kit and then I've also got um, this the muffler so basically each part adds maybe you know a few mil to the axle and you end up just exceeding the width and also I need enough thread on the end to get those um, those knockoff those spinners on the end um, so yeah it's a bit of a struggle but I've put uh, larger axles on uh, just to make this uh, so it did all fit on so I'm going to put that bolt back in there so I don't lose it. And then, so this core, this is now, this is mounted in four parts. It's mounted, usually you'd put this over the axle, but again, because I've got the issue, I've actually mounted it onto one of the two holes at the back, which you'd, you'd put the sissy bar on. So I've mounted it there on the same side. And then the other, uh, the upper arms, they sit where the sissy bar uh, goes through the seat. And this is either usually a, an Allen key or it is a, a Phillips screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver. And on the back is a 10 mil bolt. Now I think I put nylock uh, washers on it, nylock nuts on as well, just to kind of make it more uh, stable, stop anything coming loose just due to the amount of stuff that's going on on here. This is probably when I get clattered by something either the seat or the sissy bar. And I also put longer bolts in because I'm doing the, uh, because I've got, not only have I got the, the sissy bar and the condensal kit, I've actually got a, a seat uh, frame that goes round. I'm just going to knit around the other side, get the other one off. And then we've got, oh, got the other um, lower part of the uh, continental kit just to get that uh, Allen key bolt off of here. And that, this will actually then free up not only the sissy bar, but it will also free up this continental kit. And I'll go through this with you. That's what one of these looks like. Continental kit is very simple, actually. I can't believe how expensive it is. But you have uh, two, sorry, four uh, arms on it. Two go up to the seat, two go to the back, uh, and then you have the hanger, and it's just held on by uh, nuts and bolts. I've sort of dressed it up a little bit with these sort of spiked nuts, but that's all it is, five pieces. Uh, the thinner ones are for the, to go to the sissy bar, and the thicker, shorter ones go down to the bottom there. Um, so that'll basically, I'll strip that down and get that sort of uh, cleaned up. This also frees up, I think, the sissy bar. We're going to change the dimensions of the weight again, aren't we? Can I take this off? 
probably just stop and readjust it because we're now front heavy again so we're dropping but this is a longer sissy bar than normal the uh, with the extensions usually they'll be just come straight down and they'll end there you won't have the long parts on but i wanted to put a uh, little rear lights on uh, so these are kind of an extended now is it, again you can get these twist or you can get these kind of just in uh, ordinary tube but also with the extensions on and then you can also get um, so I think you get birdcage ones as well which we discussed earlier with the little uh, part in them this is stamped as well with the low rider emblem I think most of the parts I've got on here I've had made sure that the original so they're stamped so what I'm going to do is take a little bit off the front I don't know if you can see it now because it's dropped down you're probably just going to miss what I'm doing but uh, what I'll do is I'll try and get what I'm taking off at the minute is the pub cap spinners, whichever you want to call them. So we've got two for the front, and these are labelled with, uh, as I said earlier, these are 26T, whereas the other ones were 24. If you put them on, what you'll find is either be, um, if you put them on incorrectly, you'll find that one is loose, and the other one you end up actually ripping the threads out of them because only out at like a a mild steel aluminium so you end up shredding the threads so if it go on but that's it then you've ruined it so you just have to be careful with that so i think struggling with this i mean this bike stand is a good one but it's the, the bike as i said at the start is just so heavy um it just no matter what you do you're, you're trying to balance it but it's the parts are just so heavy on it that uh, it just it tips one way or another so what i'm gonna have to do is probably work back and forth just to try and keep it leveled uh, but we'll see how we go. You're getting there. So this one is the is a seat like a seat frame. Um, I haven't seen many of these, um, and I think they're only done in twist. You might get them in sort of this thinner twist like that, but that, that's the only one I've seen. I haven't seen them do bird cage in this. Perhaps they do, but I've not seen many of those, so that's quite rare. Um, but that kind of sits over and then mounts through the sissy bar post at the back and then you just kind of level it onto the seat. Pedals. Let's see if we can get that off without trashing the steel. So I've got double twist, double twist pedals and I think what I'm going to do as well in a later video is I'm going to bring in something called a Bratz bike. We call them Bratz over here after the kind of kids cartoon in 2004. Usually purple with silver stars on. Look a lot like a low rider, the eight ball low rider, but there's, there's subtle differences. So I'll probably go through a video, get one of those and go through it with you because uh, the threads are different and stuff like that. So these are, uh, again, low rider pedals, uh, branded ones. Uh, these are cut, well, I call these a double twist because they've got two uh, sets on. Different from the standard pedal, the standard pedal is usually just a black plastic one with reflectors in, but you can get, again, there's probably 15 different types of pedals. Just watch the threads, uh, make sure that it's the right thread for the uh, for the bike. The Bratz bikes, you can't buy these, after, you know, these low rider aftermarket pedals and fit them because the crank size, the thread is different on there. This one is usually a 13 mil bolt and nut that holds the seat post in. It also does the same for the uh, seat clamp that clamps the seat to the post. Now what I tend to do first is take the seat with the post. So if you take the seat off the post and then try to get the post out, you've got no sort of leverage to sort of swing it out. Again, this has got other parts on which don't come on standard bikes. This has got a, a little cage that goes around the ordinary seat clamp. Show you. So you've got your standard seat clamp, which you might not be able to see from there, but it's it's basically welded onto the top of the post um, there, the seat tube. But this is an uh, again an aftermarket custom part with it's like a triple twist uh, clamp that just kind of goes around just to dress that up. Put the bolt back here so you can use it again, and then you should be able to unless it's stuck in there. Yep. Yeah. Out. It's a very short seat post on this one, uh, but 
you've usually got a long seat post and they're usually uh, just a solid uh, like a not solid but just a, a flat tube flat tube that's also bad english just a standard steel tube uh no twist you can also get birdcage ones of these i don't tend to fit the birdcage ones because the birdcage is probably about that much um you know built into it so then you have a bit at the top a bird cage and then you have to put a bit of tube so your seat ends up being really high great if you want that kind of look but if you want it a slammed look you can't get down low enough so i'm going to leave that bit of tube in there I actually thought that was longer but i'm going to leave the seat uh, post in the bar in the seat and this is what i was talking about with a five button uh, seat for obvious reasons one two three four five um, it's like a plush velour uh, with the buttons in it's, it's obviously stamped again and they do these in a range of colors I bought this one to match the the covers uh, on the spare wheel and the uh, steering wheel and uh, that also is dusty so I'll probably take that in and give that a clean uh, next I'll probably get the take a bit off the front I think Let's see if we can level it up Devices. I can possibly stick that on there just to try and hold the front wheel in place a little while we do this. I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll give it a, give it a go. Yep. So, can you guys see? Yep, pretty much. Let me just move it over a little bit. So, this is made up for, uh, you've got your upper support, your lower support. On here I've got the twist um, fender supports all going into there. As standard, you just have a standard steel tube. I don't know if I've got one. I might have. I do. So this is a standard lower arm that fits there. Obviously this is a twist one. You can get, uh, I think it's four or five different designs on this um, and you can also get them with a slightly different rake but this one's the standard one but you can get some which are a little bit thinner so it actually sits the bike up a bit higher but this is what you class as a standard one also to note uh, they have a, a little drain hole or a molding hole in the middle there so in the end the top one they always go to the or I always put them to the inside because obviously it looks better from the outside but when you get there, I've had them sometimes where I bought a bike and it's actually had two sort of left hand uh, lowers. It doesn't make much difference, just aesthetics as of how it looks. Uh, but as I say, that's a standard one. That's what I was talking about, about the standard seat post. Um, just got straight in, but it's obviously a standard uh, steel tube rather than the twist one. So the wheels are held on with 15 mil nuts. Now I've got a just a, it's from a, a bike repair kit, a tool kit. It's got all the different parts. So this is just a 50 mil. But if you have haven't got that standard 50 mil span, it's fine. All socket. And how the again it depends how you know, correct you want to be or how finicky you are about building them, but from the factory um, when they came what you'd have is you'd have in this order you'd have the, the wheel you'd have the fender supports then the lower arm then the upper arm last and then the nuts on the top of that so it kind of goes support lower upper and at the top in the crown it goes um, crown then the lower and then the inner on the inside then the nut uh, when you're building the top Hopefully this might level it back off when we get this one off. Again, with the fender supports, they are thicker than standard, so it, everything pushes out again on the uh, on the axle. So we slip that one off. And then you have a retaining nut, which I'll show you in a minute. Set myself up there because I've fastened it together. And then 
this should slide out with the fender and then the back of the bike will drop because we've changed the weight again. But I'll just get the fender off first. And then I'll show you. So we've got this locking tab, which hopefully you can see. It has like a little um, tab on the top of it there. And that hooks into one of the holes that I showed you on the um, lower lower support. So there's obviously two, one for each axle. This is, again, you've got these uh, fender supports that are basically small uh, eight mil nut and bolts into uh, two of them. That nut there is, I've got just a, a Mr. Horsepower uh, duck on the, on the top of it just to just my personal preference. Again, these are original. They have a low rider stamped on them. And it's wet through again, so I'm just drying it off for now, just to, so it doesn't get any, you know, start rusting until I get a chance to clean it. As I can see that the fender supports are also coated in it as well. I think what I'll do is I'll jump to the back now, just to try and get the, the leveled off. Again, we're talking 15 mil uh, socket. Uh, sorry, 15 mil spanner on the back, and then I'll bring. I'll show you the wheels after that. So these are a different wheel to standard as well. So the. And if you can see again, as it dropped below camera, it has. So you can get it. It's going to be difficult. But there's a 15mm nut, I'm just going to have to hold it for now I think. Again different threads uh, on the rear axle so the nuts are different as well so be careful when you get the nuts although the 15mm uh, spanner the threads are different as well so just be careful. And that holds the muffler on. Again you can get different types. The muffler itself, the, the cone of it on the end is the same but you can get this different ones here, you can get twist. You can get birdcage ones. I've gone for the standard uh, steel, just for a cleaner look. I'm just taking the other side off. I'm not really missing much there. Take the other muffler off. Now, on low rider bikes as well, I'll take it off and then I'll show you. You have I think it's 10 mil. You have a, uh, a coaster brake on the rear. Now, this is held in place by a little bracket, which is just the nut on the floor. So, I'll show you this. So it might be a bit difficult to get it on. Stuff you have on them, they're harder they are to take apart, but there you've got that off. So, as I was saying, you have so this is how it's on the bike, but you have this uh, lock, this tab, and this mounts to the uh, lower part of the frame, which are on the other side, on the left hand side, it mounts to this lower section, and there's a bracket, hopefully, it's still here, and sometimes these are missing. So this bracket sits over the lower frame on the other side and then as you've got your wheel, you have to excuse the fact that it's back to front, you basically bolt that on to that lower arm and that holds it. So when you use the coaster brake by pedaling backwards, it, it, it basically puts the brake on. If you don't have that attached properly, what happens is you uh, pedal or brake and that will actually fall, it'll end up going round and it'll try and bypass this bottom arm and that's why you end up People say that they haven't got a, a rear brake, it's because this arm isn't attached properly. I've managed to, oh, I thought I'd managed to lose the nut there. 
So what I'm going to do is basically just put that bracket on there so I don't lose it with the nut and bolt. That way it's there when I need it next time. As I say, it's just a, a Phillips uh, screw on the top and then a 10 mil uh, bolt on the bottom. And these wheels that I have on, no, you can get different types. These are called, uh, I call them fan spoke. So as you can see, instead of being 144 spokes all the way around, they've got these gaps um, that sort of make a, a fan pattern. It, you can see that in the light there where you can see the holes and the gaps. So these are fan wheels or fan spoke wheels. Same with the front. And on the front, I've actually put a, a trim ring on. If you can see this, you can see that ring there, this, this twist steel ring. I couldn't put it on the back because there's just not enough room inside there with all the stuff going on and the frame. I just couldn't get the, the ring in there. So I'm gonna have another look at that, see what I can do. But these they look nice, they're very difficult to fit because they have little uh, mild steel tabs on them all the way around and you have to sort of fold them in without catching the inner tube and what happens is you probably only get one or two attempts at doing those and then the tabs break off. I've got a couple up there where the tabs have actually broken off so it just hot, it flaps and it won't hold it in place. So I've done this, they're nice if you get them on I think they're a little bit overrated, but it does kind of add a little bit of bling to the wheel after the end of it. And we're nearly there. Um, just got the front forks and uh, the chain guard to take off. So the chain guard, again, many different types, held in with a couple of uh, Phillips, screwdriver, Phillips screws, one at the back, and it should have the little uh, tab on the lower arm there. Put it on, and then one just behind the crank. Just in there. And this again, the triple twist, uh, the standard ones. That's what you should get on as standard. If you can see that one, it has like the, the kind of radius on it there, the, the fins. And again, different types. It's probably about five or ten different types of uh, chain guard. This one's got some slight rust in it because it's had dirt on it and it's wet again. So I'll basically dip that and clean it, which in other videos you'll have seen where I use citric acid to dip and get rid of rust. And I just tend to put the screws back in so I don't lose them. Um, that's usually on restoration projects, so I've got a pot that I usually put them in because now, having done so many for about the last eight years, I'm pretty fluid as to where all the stuff goes. Finally, what I'm going to do, I'm probably not going to take the crank out. It's easy enough to do, there's just a nut on the back, uh, but I might, you've seen me do that before. Is I'm going to get the rear fender off, strip the front off, and I think we'll wrap it up for this episode, um, and we'll you know, spring it back after. So we've taken the fender supports off. There's a little ten, uh, screw and a 10 mil bolt in there. Is it 10 or eight? It might actually be eight. Um, and then there's a little uh, Phillips screw just in the bottom. Uh, behind the, the, the stand if it's got one, kickstand, and that mounts it to the frame at the bottom. So there's a little Phillips screw back there. And then the only thing holding it on then is this little, uh, on the bridge, there's a, get it round, on the bridge there, between the two upper uh, supports, there's a little bridge, and there's a little uh, nut and bolt in there. That was a little bit more involved than an 8mm. It looks like when I built this I decided to put uh, a locking nut on the bottom uh, under here so that's been quite a challenge getting that off but we've uh, done it now. So this should then come off again. Actually I'll go through this video as well because there's a different style what well, I didn't mention on the others. So obviously you've got your fender supports which in this case are the um, twist ones, two locations the rear mounting, but also if you see the, the end of this, where it flutes out, this is called ducktail. So you have standard ones which just go around to the bottom and then loop round, and then you have the ones that kick out, and the front's the same, it kicks out at the back there, and these are called uh, ducktail uh, fenders. Again, this is a low rider brand of one. It's, it's dried off, but it's covered in um, sort of dust and filth, so that needs cleaning up. Just put 
the washer back on, not the washer back on so I don't lose that again. Now leave the chain on. Uh, and the only thing we've got left now really is the front forks. Um, and they are constructed as so. You've got, as I say, lower and uppers. You have a 13mm uh, nut behind the top of the crown there. You have a 17mm bolt going through with a 14mm uh, nut on the other side. And this is a 17mm um, bolt that goes through for your springer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the upper and lower off and then I'll describe the spring section. So I've got everything but 14. So I've got 17 on this side and then 14 on the other. Now if you buy a bike and you find it very difficult to ride or steer particularly, check that this front is secure, is tight. Because if this is loose, what happens is the, the sort of front moves independently like that, I don't know if you can see, and then it, it basically just makes it very difficult to steer the bike or ride the bike. That's so always something to check just to make sure that the, well, if somebody's taking their car or if that's worked loose, that it's actually back together. And we'll say you have a 13mm uh, nut on the top, and it is quite a special bolt, it's, it's like a, a coach bolt. And then you can take your upper supports off like so again this is a triple twist um, it doesn't make much difference on the on the standard ones if I can find a standard don't have a standard arm with me but I'll show you when I can um, but you normally have low rider stamped on the bottom and that would go on the outside and go to the bottom and the bolt as I said is a little bit special um, because it has it's like a domed coach bolt but it has this square um, lock on it, this square tab at the top, and that actually locks into this section, which is called the crown. This has a square hole in it, and that locks in and stops it spinning. So if I drop the, the bolt out now, that's your lower arm, as I said. This one's twist. Yes. 17 mil bolt a washer and then it's either a nut or a, a domed nut depending sometimes it's just a standard nut but I, I try and put the domed ones on and then you've got the other side which is 13 and then it should as I say as I said before you've got your upper support first if you take them off and then your lower support and if you put it back on you'd have your lower support then your upper support and the nut and bolt go through again i'll just put those back in so i don't have to search for them or store them in another tub and then we've got i think the last bit i'll do is i'll take the this springer section off and then i think we'll wrap it up for now So 17 mil spanner on the end here, and that just winds out. Now what you can do on this as well by winding it in and out, you actually add more flex, so you can either you can stiffen the front suspension up. Uh, and what you can actually also do, which I've seen people do, is get rid of all that. then they have that mounted straight up to this, this arm on the top and that basically then from being there with the suspension it actually brings the suspension and if you've seen, um, I'll, I'll try and put a picture on the end, one of my bikes which is lowered, it actually brings the wheel right up and drops the pedals but what ends up happening is the pedals are then touching the floor so it, it makes it more of a, a demo piece or a just a, a static piece, you can't really ride it um, and I've seen people put the spring on the front so that's a cheap way of lowering a bike by just kind of bringing that up and then uh, letting it roll back. Uh, but there is uh, crowns you can buy which are extended, so it still has a spring on it. And then this section, let me bring it a bit near the camera, the extended uh, arms, whereas that bolt's there, this still has the spring behind it, but this hole is actually extended, so it actually comes to about there. So you end up still with the lowered stance, but with the spring on it. 
And just to go through the correct way to install as well, what you have is you have your, that's, that's called, the, I call that the clamp, the top clamp. You have the spring, which you put the, it's got a, a, a fatter end and a thin end. The fatter end to the back, and then the bolt with a, you have a rubber and a cap. They go through, and then that mounts onto the, this bracket on the top there. And that kind of gives you your correct uh, sort of setup on that. Occasionally I've seen it where these parts are missing or it's installed backwards. It doesn't make much difference, but you get a lot of slop and it just it looks weird. Also, a common fault on these, which this one has, is if they're uh, ridden quite a lot or, or it's not uh, set up properly, you can see here, hopefully, that that hole is elongated. See how it's kind of uh, wore out at the back or the bottom there? That I've seen is normal. Once you've got the cover over, you don't really see it, but you will get a little bit more play in there. It isn't a tight fit anyway. It just, it just, it just looks unsightly if you took it off. But when you're in normal use, you won't notice. Um, you know, it's, it's hidden anyway. It's just, it's in, it might be in the back of your mind that it's worn. I think that's going to wrap it up for now. Um, I've droned on for long enough. If you've got questions or anything was unclear, just put something in the comments below. Um, happy to help, happy to sort of give advice and stuff like that. I think what we'll do is, is next one I'll probably clean it back or go through cleaning it all up and then put it back together. I might do an instruction on how to put stuff back together and see if there's any sort of difficulties that you experience putting it back together. But I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope it's been useful uh, and thanks for watching. Bye.